Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Blue Jet Healthcare Limited Q4 FY24 conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10 zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Adwait Badekar from EY Investor Relations. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Sagar. Good evening, and a warm welcome, everyone, to Q4 and FY24 earnings call of BlueJet Healthcare Limited. Please note, investor, investor presentation and the financial results are available on the company website and the stock exchanges. Also, anything said on this call which reflects our outlook for the future or which could be construed as a forward-looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risks that the company faces. The conference call is being recorded and the transcript along with the audio of the same will be made available on the website of the company as well as on the exchanges. Please also note that the audio of the conference call is the copyright material of Bluejet Healthcare Limited and cannot be copied rebroadcasted or attributed in press or media without specific and written consent of the company. From the management side, we have with us Mr. Shivain Arura, Managing Director, Mr. VK Singh, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Ganesh Karupanan, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Sanjay Sina, Deputy Chief Financial Officer. Now, I'd now, I would request Mr. Shivain Arora, Managing Director of Bluejet Healthcare Limited, to provide you with the updates for the quarter and the year ended uh, 31st March 2024. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, and a warm welcome to all. I would like to start off by saying that as a company, we were able to restructure the business successfully despite the incident, which had a short term impact on the business. With our sustained efforts and strong business continuity plan, we were able to grow our business in Q4 compared to Q3 FY24 by 10%. We believe to have strong abilities in capital management with the key ratios of ROCE at 26%, EBITDA at 32%, and fixed asset turnover north of 5X. As a company, we are also evaluating to acquire strategic talent for R&D and business development activities in Europe, which is our key market. On the manufacturing side, while Mr. VK will take you through the midterm CAPEX plan, but seeing the overall outsourcing trends in the CDMO business, we are also evaluating a much larger CAPEX plan. Once formalized, we will update in the coming quarters. To share some business highlights, we will continue our strategic intent of serving innovative customers in the pharma space and marquee customers in the artificial sweetener space. Listing of the company has increased the brand awareness, and we are also able to see more inquiries and positive feedback from our existing customers. We have seen positive developments across our business segments. To start with Contrast Media, which is about 68% of our revenues as on FY24, our dominant segment. As you are aware, we are closely working with the industry leaders in the med tech industry and are able to sustainably increase our wallet share with our key customers, both in the iodinated space for extra CT products and gadolinium space for MRI application. Important update, our validation quantities for advanced intermediates in the iodinated side has received a customer approval. And the NC intermediate on the gadolinium side is gaining solid traction in the market. The second vertical, pharma intermediates, the CRAM segment, about 14% of our business, which grew by about 156% year on year. We started commercial production of pharmaceutical intermediate for our innovator customer in FY24. Our innovator customer presence in the market has been further strengthened by the label expansions and approvals in both regulated and less regulated markets, confirming our order book for the next 18 months. We also see a surge in RFPs with our other innovators across in our focus areas of oncology, CNS, and cardiovascular health. The third vertical, artificial sweetener segment, we continue our development activities in this segment since we are already supplying 
to market names in the FMCG space and pharmaceutical segment, and have demonstrated a great track record with them. There is a high likelihood to expand this portfolio in the segment and grow with our existing customers. On this note, I will pass it on to Mr. VK to give more light on our CAPEX and R&D initiatives. Thank you. Thank you, Shivan, and good evening to all of you attending the call. This is VK Singh. Uh, I will quickly take you through the CAPEX that we are incurring. Uh, the CAPEX cycle is mostly in step uh, with what we had indicated in the previous call. If you recall, we were building a block at Unit 2 Umbernaut, which will cater to the uptick in the volumes of our intermediate for the CDMO cardiovascular opportunity with the innovator in the PI segment. This block will also cater to the NC opportunity that we were tracking in a contrast media segment which will be going on stream shortly. As indicated on our previous calls, this block will be ready for validation in the quarter one of FY25. With regard to unit three, Mahad, we foresee a delay of a quarter. The plant will now be ready for validation batches in quarter one of FY26. As we speak, we are in the process of commissioning the soon treatment plant at unit three. But as you know that this is, uh, this site is not deployed for making any product that we currently you know, sell, but was more for import substitution of a particular product that we import, and hence we don't foresee any material sales revenue impact from this delay of a quarter. The multi-purpose block in Mahad Unit 3 will get validated by quarter two of FY26. With regard to Unit 4, that is the Greenfield site, uh, our expansion site in Morivali, here also the site master plan is ready and submitted, and all the required approvals for the commencement of work at the site have been submitted. We expect this unit to be on stream in the second half of FY27. Additionally, we had invested in a solar plant, which went live in quarter three FY24. With regard to R&D, to be able to keep in step with the additional capacity of about 50% that we are adding, we have increased our R&D as well. We have augmented our scientific talent pool and also significantly increased the number of labs that we had. Several patents have been filed in FY24 and some new chemistry platforms have been added on which work has commenced, like the pyrophoric platform, the iodination platform, enzymatic platform, and a platform on which we are working for amino acids. To assist our increased focus in R&D and improve the speed of industrialization, a world-class pirate plant with versatile capabilities under construction. This will help r and in proof of concept and act as a bridge between bulk and bench production. Quickly touching upon sustainability, as a responsible company, our endeavor always is on reducing our carbon footprint and GHG emissions. With our solar plant going on stream in the previous financial year, almost 60 to 70 percent of our power requirements should be met from renewable energy sources. We are also consciously working on several green initiatives as far as our chemistry is concerned. We continuously strive to achieve high level of atom efficiency in our process chemistry and strive to make our industrial process and plant designs more efficient and environmentally friendly. And I'm happy to say that we have achieved good success in this regard. With this, I will hand it over to my colleague Ganesh, who will take you through the financial numbers. Good evening. I'll first start with Q4, talk about key highlights of Q4, and then go to the full year of FI24. When you look at Q4 sales, we had a growth of 10% compared to the previous quarter, Q3. 
And as you are aware, Q3, there was an impact in the performance due to the accident incident at Mahat. And uh, we are able to come out of this impact. And Q4, we are able to demonstrate a sales growth of 10%. In terms of EBITDA, Q4, it dropped approximately by 3.9%. Uh, this is pro primarily because of change in WIT and finished goods. If you see our PNL for Q4, uh, the change in WIT and finished goods is almost close to 27 crores, 274 million, and there is an overhead impact which normally gets inventorized in the previous quarter, gets released to the PNL in the subsequent quarter. So because of this. Uh, we had an impact close to 4.3%, which was offset by reduction in operating expense, marginally because of uh, ocean freight and the power cost. As BK Singh mentioned, uh, uh, we are dependent more on renewable energy, and this has had a positive impact on our overall power consumption. Our profit after tax is at 21.6%, an improvement of 2.3% compared to Q3. Uh, if you go to the full year FI24, uh, our turnover is more or less flattish. Uh, it actually do, de grew by 1.3%. Uh, our sales from operations of product segment is around 708 crore against the last year number of 718 crore. The sale of artificial sweeter and PI grew, and this was actually offset partially by uh, degrowth in contrast media. Uh, the key factor on degrowth in contrast media is the sort of action by the customers in terms of destocking and they plan to take a longer maintenance, which is actually disturbing the overall shipment. So today you see a variability on quarter to quarter dispatch, which in our opinion should get eased out uh, after Q2. EBITDA is a for the full year is 32.2%, an improvement of 1.8% compared to FI23. This is predominantly driven by reduction in raw material price, and we are also able to control our operating expense, and there is more or less a flattish trend in the operating expense. This EBITDA is before extraordinary item. We had actually classified 97 million on account of the Ahad incident as extraordinary expense. Uh, this is a conservative approach wherein we have actually taken it, the entire loss of standard missionary is taken as an extraordinary item. As and when we receive the claim from the insurance company, this would be reversed and will be shown as a credit to the PMI. The profit after tax for the full year is at 23% compared to 22.2% for the last year, uh, remaining flattish. But uh, we should be growing at a healthy pack rate of 23%. As far as the new product launch is concerned, in FI24, uh, we launched the intermediate pharmaceutical uh, in, in the pharmaceutical intermediate segment. And you could actually see a significant growth in that particular uh, segment. And we do expect with our new capacity what Shazan and uh, VK mentioned about, uh, we should have be in a position to actually like optimize the capacity in this financial year. Certain general observations. In terms of raw material, we could actually see the overall reduction in the price level during this year. Uh, almost all of our uh, key raw materials, uh, we could see a marginal decline in the prices. 
and we believe uh, this particular trend uh, should sustain and uh, which should actually help us in sustaining our gross margin. Uh, coming to working capital, there is a reduction in receivable. Uh, this is due to the customer mix. Uh, we talked about uh, contrast media sales declining uh, due to customer offtake, and pharmaceutical intermediate sales is going up. Because of this, uh, there is a different credit term between uh, contrast media customers versus pharmaceutical intermediate customers. And because of this customer mix credit term, uh, the working capital has actually come down. Inventory remained at the similar level compared to last year. And with the commercialization of the new products, we do expect the in inventory level to marginally go up in the current financial year. Uh, payable also dropped predominantly because of product mix and the payment terms. And CapEx, uh, already VK Singh has explained, uh, we have spent close to 200 crores in this financial year, uh, after which is capitalized plus the capital work in progress. And we should be spending at least uh, 200 crore per annum for the next two years at least on the CapEx plan for our uh, units, for our existing units. I think with this, I just open the floor for Q and A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Again, if you have any questions, please press star and one. Our first question is from the line of Ashwit Jain from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, Sanjay Shir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, hi, hi. This is Sanjay Shir. Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, I got a few of the questions. First, Ganesh, actually, you explained the reason for the lower gross margin in the quarter. Uh, I missed that. One of the reasons is that we have lower mix of uh, contrast media. I get that, but uh, there is data drop than what we thought. So, what is driving this decline in the margin? This is predominantly because of uh, change in WIP and finished goods. Okay. Uh, after, if you notice, uh, if you refer our p and you will see the change is close to 27 stores. Correct. Okay. Now, uh, this is tough accounting. Normally, the overhead gets inventorized along with the fixed goods valuation. Correct. Plus overhead. So whatever overhead that got inventorized in the last quarter, so this quarter, whenever this change happens, to that extent it impacts your p &L. This is nothing to do with our actual gross margin that, that, that is intact. But this aberration has occurred only because our uh, finished goods stock end of the year is lower than the previous quarter. Oh, I thought that, that should also capture in the other expenses, right? Because our other expenses are pretty much flattish. Uh, I know there is a slight bit of employee cost which has come down, but other expenses have remained flattish. What explains the decline in the EBITDA margin by 400 basis point? See, like if I look at by product, the margins are almost identical compared to Q3. There is no major change. Now, okay. The real impact is only on account of this uh, closing inventory, closing inventory of finished goods. This may be offline. I can explain how this works. Okay. So, so what we are telling that there is no impact because of change in the mix because the contrast media mix has come down from 68 to 62, uh, while sweetener and pharma mix has gone up, which otherwise have a lower margin. 
that should have some impact right so technically like this product mix the impact is very less the okay bigger impact is more on account of a change in inventory fair enough fair enough uh, next question is on the iodinated product and the gadolinium and the cardiovascular uh, first on the iodinated we are, are we still in the validation stage so when 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 should we expect the commercial supplies to begin and uh, what is the risk in the validation stage can can it uh, go back and tell that these this needs to be uh, optimized further so so that can increase the timeline how should we think about it yeah so this uh, specifically on this iodinated molecule which is an advanced intermediate from our current base uh, we have supplied this material for validation uh, in the month of january and uh, today we have uh, got a full approval from them so okay. i think could go wrong when it comes to the product quality i think it has been established well and the use test trials have come out uh, fairly positive um so scale up will happen during this this particular financial year that's clear and and what about the byproducts to be produced from the uh, iodine which will come up to resilient and all those things where are we process in terms of optimizing the operation i think uh, with this uh, 8 to 9 metric ton dispatch of these validation quantities we were fair, we were able to fairly demonstrate well in terms of the overall recovery cycle of the iodine and we are very confident uh, in terms of having a very sustainable margin on this particular product also going forward fair enough and the second view shivan made a comment that gadolinium has seen a good pickup uh, while innovator initially did not see so much of a uh, success with that product uh, uh what is driving the success right now for them and uh, how is it uh, benefiting us so i think it uh, in past few months it got a european approval yeah um, with uh, with these regulated market approvals we can uh, further flood the market with the material and uh, they are also filing uh, this nc molecule in the other uh, semi regulated markets as well Uh, i think this will drive the future growth um, and that's one of the reasons we were we had expand this uh, capacity for this uh, particular intermediate as well got it lastly on the um, uh, on the cardiovascular drug which we are supplying to the innovator um how has been the order book looking like for the next fiscal year considering that they had a big success with the uh, our regulator Um, and also also expected to get from the european union as well that should establish them doing the billion dollar plus kind of product so what does it mean for us in terms of the pipeline for us i think fine see the label updation sanjesh and the label expansion were already approved in the uh, uh, us this year this calendar year correct uh, i think it happened in the month of uh, may uh after that we expect something similar uh label expansion in in the european market as well um there could be an uptick in volume but the capacity that we have now created i think we have enough to be able to address should there be any uptick that's uh, indicated by the customer i think we are in very good state as far as the traction that the molecule is uh, getting and the capacity that uh, we have now created in unit 2 plan 6 which is going to go uh, on stream uh, this quarter itself so we, how much how much uh, uh, capacity are we expanding with this new kit uh, this is a multi product block okay. it's not only for uh, the innovator we have couple of other products so it will be uh, not appropriate to give uh, or dedicate the whole capacity for one particular customer fair enough fair enough uh, just one last sure. right sir so may we request you to return to the question queue for any other follow up questions please okay thank you thanks 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 to shivan and vikas for answering all the answers thank you the next question is from the line of sudarshan padmanabhan from jm financial please go ahead yeah thank you for taking my question uh, specifically on the cardiovascular risk just taking cues from the earlier participant and you will you know give us uh, you're sounding a bit muffled so if you're using the speaker mode maybe request to use the handset mode yeah can you hear me now 
this yeah. is much better yes sir please go yeah yeah so yeah this is with respect to the cardiovascular intermediate taking cues from the earlier participants i mean you know our client is listed and you know if we look at the commentary post the label extension so in the us alone they talked about you know potentially additional 50 million and europe could be incremental so in that context i mean fy25 definitely we see good growth but if you are looking at peak you know uh, sales in the us and also with europe how do we see say in the next 3 to 4 years specifically with respect to this molecule both in terms of scale as well as in terms of profitability you know it's uh, very difficult to predict how a molecule will uh, behave and uh, but but all that we we can say is that the data was presented to the fda and the data was also presented to the american cardiology college and both institutes which are institutes of international repute there is very high acceptability uh, of this data because of the acceptability of this data uh, the uh, uh, molecule is now uh, in, indicated not only for secondary use but as a primary uh, treatment uh, uh, product so now it 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 is used to address the the primary indication and that's the reason that like you mentioned that the addressable population uh, goes up by 50 or 60 million in the US and uh, maybe uh, even higher in in uh, Europe and other markets so i think uh, as far as the molecule is concerned there is today no other oral uh, product which will be which can act as an adjunct to the statins so there is great potential and uh, we reckon that uh, this uh, would be a blockbuster sure sir and uh, with respect to you know the profitability and second is uh, sir uh, you know given that this is the only non statin used to reduce the cholesterol as you had mentioned i mean i would you know with respect to you know visa we what the client earlier had you know requested in terms of capacity had there been any kind of an upward revision in the you know kind of volumes that now talking about see uh, there could be an uptick in volume and uh, as blue jet we are prepared to address that uh, the capacity that we have created is not only for this product uh, the block that we have built has got a very large capacity so should that be an uptick in volume because of the primary indication that it is now valid for i think we are well positioned to address that upside but beyond this i think uh, uh, it's not prudent to comment sure sir uh, and shifting to the uh, you know uh, the cmi segment Uh, if i'm correct one of our clients had taken a, you know plant shut down to expand capacity so it might have impacted our numbers say in the last couple of quarters i mean but the expanded capacity benefit should benefit you know is, is you know when is it expected to start and how do we see the benefits uh, you know probably in the next couple of quarters see we see the a slowdown even for one more quarter and maybe we should come back to our uh, historical levels from uh, q3 onwards actually i think that is when uh, we expect the volumes to pick up sure so one final question before i you know get back into the queue uh, with respect to you know the overall business i mean we have seen some kind of you know lower than expected uptake primarily because of various issues you know or various hurdles across segment with volume picking up big time i mean if you are looking at various uh, tailwinds should what should be the kind of margin expansion that you would be looking at you know with the operating leverage yeah i think uh, you pointed out well i think we are all aware of the short term impact but if you see the big picture and the several tailwinds for this particular segment uh, the outlook is fairly positive um and uh, we are also further backward integrating um in unit 3 for a particular key intermediate um so going forward since this is already backed by multi year supply agreement uh um, by using our own intermediate we will have a uh, good control on uh, an already a very profitable product so thanks a lot for your time
Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bansi from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, my first question is on contrast media. Uh, so, Ganesh, you mentioned that probably this uh, impact uh, will continue for the next two quarters. So, uh, fair to assume that our fiscal 25 run date will be similar to our fiscal 24 because I'm assuming the newer products uh, also probably will start contributing or probably will be in the phase of ramping up. Uh, so, may, any any color there? Yeah, I think as a segment overall, um, of course, there's a short-term impact, but uh, the newer advanced intermediate will act as a very good buffer to see a potential growth in the segment uh, for the next financial year. Okay, that and this and this is this is both for uh, so you you need to say uh, the advanced intermediate in ionated space and in the gadolinium uh, space, the NC molecule, both will equally contribute? How should we think about, you know, product opportunities, uh, you know, between them? Both are, uh, both are highly credible uh, candidates. One is an NC, which is gaining traction in, uh, uh, in the regulated and semi-regulated markets. And the other uh, ionated molecule is a well-established, uh, growing at a double digit uh, annually in the end market. So, um, most important milestone was this validation for the ionated uh, intermediate, which the company has uh, done successfully. Okay, so uh, that should basically drive growth uh, in CM business in fiscal 25 over 24, despite the impact of uh, uh, plant shutdown on, on one of your products. That's the end of it, yes. And um, um, the second question is that, you know, on unit two, um, you know, we can mention, you know, it is, um, uh, ready and on stream. Uh, so when should we start seeing uh, commercialization of, uh, you know, uh, uh, product here? So, I mean, is our sale today, sales today constrained because of, uh, you know, uh, this plant not being validated and now that it's done, we should now see a, um, you know, a spike? You know, how should we think about the ramp up here? See, uh, <clears throat> in quarter two, FI25, we should see an uptick in the supplies that we are making because the new capacity, the large, larger capacity is getting on stream. And this capacity will be, uh, you know, multifold of uh, what our current existing capacity or what quantities we could be selling right now. Yes. Okay, got it. And between our, uh, you know, segments, uh, contrast media, artificial sweetener, and, uh, you know, PI, API, fair to assume that gross margins are broadly uh, similar? Uh, contrast media would be slightly higher. The PI, API, and uh, artificial sweetener would be similar. Okay, so uh, next year, if if you are expecting higher growth in, uh, you know, say for example, PI, API because of the wrap up of the product, how should we think about gross margins? It should be like the, whatever current level you are, uh, we are having, maybe it may go down by a percent or two. Okay, and uh, you also mentioned about augmenting, um, you know, your team uh, in terms of, you know, adding capabilities in R&D and elsewhere. Should that uh, have any bearing on your employee cost? Yes, uh, if you see our numbers, the 525, the employee cost is significantly higher. Uh, but then our sales are also increasing. Even in FI25, uh, uh, we would be adding uh, some people. Uh, both at the senior management level and at the execution level. Uh, we'll be also, you know, increasing our R&D further. So we are gearing up to, to, uh, to keep in step with the uh, growth that we envisage. Okay, got it. I have more questions. I'll join back. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil from SIMPL, please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. A uh, few questions. Uh, one is, uh, can you talk about uh, our CDMO? How is the pipeline looking like? You know, in the initial comment, you said that there are a lot more interactions which are happening. But uh, any sense on how is the RFQs or uh, 
of what, how large is our pipeline currently? Some indication you can talk. Uh, see, we are, uh, you mentioned our RFQs uh, or RFPs, and that's uh, a very valid point that you, uh, you brought out. Um, given the environment that we have today and the tailwinds that we are, you know, experiencing A, as a country and two, as a boutique CDMO, I think the RFPs that we have is 2x of what we used to have. Uh, speaking of the pipeline, I think in all three segments, we have a deep pipeline. Contrast media, we are looking at new products as well as forward integration. So that uh, gives a lot of depth to the pipeline. Uh, in the uh, high intensity sweetener or artificial sweetener, there also we are working on two or three very credible opportunities, some large opportunities, which will add to the current uh, uh, commercialized product. On the PI API side, uh, you can see traction already. I mean, the opportunities that got incubated two, three years back and now fructifying. Going forward, we, are, uh, we, we have a strong pipeline as well. A uh, couple of launches would happen in FY25. Uh, as I mentioned, that we have added a couple of chemistry platforms also, uh, new chemistry platforms. Uh, based upon those platforms also, there will be some new products that we will be developing. How soon they will you know, get to industrial or commercial scale that we have to see. But as far as pipeline is concerned, I think we are in a very good, good, uh, good place and, and, uh, and uh, the, the R&D pipeline is well poised to drive growth. Okay, uh, just one continuation. On contrast media, uh, if you look at the global supplier base, we know one of the large players in India, but other than India, how do you see the competitive uh, dynamics in this space? Are there more players coming in, or is it like the level of competition is largely uh, plus minus two, three players, but largely stable? How, how should we understand? Because the profitability, what you enjoy, as you said, on the gross margins and all, it looks very favorable and a very large growing market. So are there more players coming, or? How how should we understand this? Yeah, so I think uh, the the industry is fairly consolidated. Uh, I think four key players uh, have about uh, more than seventy five percent of uh, global market share, and uh, for the past ten years or more. Uh, sorry, uh, Shivan, I was more trying to understand from the suppliers of the API. On the formulation, we understand it's a largely consolidated player. But in terms of suppliers of intermediate API, how, how do you see the scenario? No, so the ones who are formulating the four key large players are also manufacturing APIs uh, today. And there is a strong sense of uh, drug device coupling in this, and that's one of the major reasons. Uh, they have solid control on the API and also medical devices in some cases, so which has helped them to you know, maintain this market share for the past more than 10 years. And in the balance 20% market share, yes, uh, there are a uh, few Indian players that have entered, and uh, there are multiple players in uh, China for uh, the ionated uh, set of molecules. How we are working differently is, of course, working on established uh, uh, key customers and also innovating on their NC site, on the MRI space. So we will always be marginally ahead of the curve, even if there's a strong generic competition kicking in. Okay, and last question. Can you talk about uh, our revenue from top customer, top five and top 10 customers for FY24? It's pretty much the same. Like uh, our success is concentrated with uh, three major players in contrast media. And the addition to that list is the new innovator, in the PI segment. So apart from that, uh, technically there is no change in the customer mix, uh, but for the PI customer uh, in the, uh, the innovator customer. Can you uh, provide the percentage revenue contribution from them, uh, top customer, top five, top 10, which we presented in our DRHP? No, we don't share that actually. Okay, fine. Thanks, I'll come back in the room. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, if you wish to register for a question, you may press star and one.
The next question is from the line of Ritika from Value Quest. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, my first question is on contract media. When we see the export data, we saw much lower shipments of one of the large drugs, uh, of course, due to uh, plant maintenance at Innovator's End. But in terms of revenue booking, on a QOQ basis, we saw flat uh, revenue. So uh, uh, could you please explain uh, how uh, uh, did we book the revenues or how does the revenue booking happen? See, in uh, our case, the supplies to the key customer in contrast media is on a, a DAP term, which is delivery at place. Technically, unless the material reaches the site, we cannot actually recognize as sale. Okay, so generally, the in accounting term, we call it a sales cutoff. What has happened this quarter is the sales cutoff of previous quarter got recognized in this quarter. Okay, so that's why you would see like if you see the data, uh, export data, uh, the, the there would be a what we would have recognized will be more than what is dispatched. This is because whatever dispatched in the previous quarter actually gets into the uh, recognized as sale in this quarter. But that would be rolling on a quarter on quarter basis. Even uh, last quarter, some sales from the previous quarter would have got recorded. You are right. The, the challenge is this quarter, uh, what I mentioned, since the offtake is a bit lower, the cutoff is also coming down. You understood? Uh, no, sir. Uh, this last bit, can you please explain? See, this quarter, our dispatch is lower. Because of that, even our sales cutoff is very much on the lower side. That would actually have an impact in the next quarter. So this quarter, we don't have an impact. In terms of revenue recognized, you will see some impact in the Q1 of FI25. Got it, got it. But uh, uh, there is uh, nothing to do with inventory uh, at our warehouse. Uh, uh, no, nothing, no, nothing of that. Yeah. Got it, got it. Uh, okay, thank you. And uh, last question is on KPEX. We have guided for the 200 KPEX for 25 and 26. Uh, could we get a split of this 400 crores between Mahar and uh, the new Greenfield unit file? Uh, it will be more or less uh, equal, I would actually put it like that. Got it, got it. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Pradeep Rawat from UK Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. So I have, I have only one question. Uh, so uh, we have spent over 200 crore this year, and we are guiding for uh, 200 crore for next year and 200 crore for the next year. So uh, what kind of fixed asset turnover should we uh, see for these KPEXs? I would actually put it in the range of uh, upwards of three. Uh, so currently we have a case, uh, asset turnover of four. So why we are uh, like estimating it to be in the range of three? So this is actually like today what you are seeing is a, a depreciated block. So like when you actually do the new, the new capex, it will be around three actually, upwards of three which according to me itself is a excellent ratio. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. If you have any further questions, you may press star and one. Our next question is from the line of Kanishka Sarkar, who's a private investor. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, uh, hi. Uh, good evening to all of you. Um, uh, so I just want to 
um, you know, have one understanding. So, uh, of course, we went through a little difficult times, you know, after the accident and all. And now we are kind of getting up to invest a lot of money. Uh, I have just one simple question. That as a company, uh, post-IPO, uh, you know, there is a great sense that we are changing the gear in terms of growth. So I just want to know uh, from the management's perspective, with the investments we have done, doing currently, and which is planned in the next one year, when do you see the inflection point, which is that part or, you know, uh, in terms of time, uh, maybe a year down the line, months down the line, where do you see the inflection point where we actually ramp up the growth and we move into the higher trajectory? You know, I think the capacities would be kicking in in different phases uh, in this financial year as well in the next year, but full extent would be seen in 26, 27. Okay, right, right. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next follow-up question is from the line of Ashwik Chain from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, this is Sanjay again. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, so just just touching upon this uh, revenue recognition which you mentioned on the DAP basis. I thought we are also managing the supply chain for our largest customer. Uh, that means we should have built certain inventory at our warehouse and we deliver it on a just on time basis. How does that vary from this uh, revenue recognition what we are talking right now? So this you are with, uh, when the customer uh, When his off take goes down, okay, in okay. a particular order, uh, we don't actually produce and stock it. Okay. Uh, so to that extent, even our uh, production goes down. Mm -hmm. So there are two factors. Uh, during this quarter, our total actual production is on the lower side, okay? Okay. And, Whatever positive benefit you are actually seeing is because of the cutoff which came from the previous quarter. Okay. Okay. This quarter, our finished goods is uh, very much on the lower side, and if uh, this impact you would see only in Q1 of 25. Got it. So when should we see the normalization of supply to the uh, largest customer? When should that happen? In our estimate, it will be Q2. And second is on uh, the uh, equity prices and its impact on the realization. Uh, how have they behaved? Uh, there is actually a reduction in the APD prices, marginal Correct. reduction during the year. And Shivin can take on that. Um, so I think uh, with this backward integration play, I think. Uh, we would be able to further improve the profitability of uh, this major product. Uh, but uh, overall market is, uh, in terms of the sourcing, uh, has been uh, very favorable when it comes to APD prices. Uh, interestingly, I would like to take this opportunity to explain further. Uh, from this particular backward integration block, uh, there is an opportunity to sell to other contrast media players as well. Uh, but the idea is to first use this quantity for our consumption and uh, then uh, then perhaps pitch it to the other uh, key players in this space. Okay, so we are still, uh, I thought APD prices should be too low for us to make uh, any large economical benefit out of that uh, APD uh, plant which we are trying to put. Uh, you still see the economics being favorable for uh, being a backward integrated facility? Um, I mean, I, I, it, the kind of uh, continuous manufacturing that we are trying to develop in this particular block will definitely drive uh, better efficiencies for us as a company. Got it. Got it. And strategic independence is also important because uh, in the year 2021, uh, there was a big impact on uh, the APD prices. So cycles like this in this current world uh, do happen, and uh, we will still... Uh, continue to, of course, manufacture our own APD, but also outsource uh, some quantities to keep our uh, existing suppliers uh, uh, in place. 
and, and any plan for further backward integration in our uh, new product uh, for the PI API segment? I think we are very much uh, covered um, in terms of uh, the supply chain when it comes to the, the PI product. Okay, there we are not looking to further backward uh, integrated product. We start from the very basic uh, chemicals, Sanjay. So, okay. Uh, so you are telling we are fully backward integrated already. So there is no meaning in going into the commodities. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Got it. Got it. Uh, we have slightly increased our capex outlay for three years. I thought we were at 500 odd crores. Right now we are 600 crores. Uh, what has changed? It's just the cost of putting up capex has gone up, or how is it? The cost of capex has remained the same, but at the same time, I would request Mr. Ganesh to add on. Uh, we are keeping a, a slightly a larger outlay for Unit 4. Uh, that is, uh, we will be replicating uh, quite a few capacities. One as a risk mitigation and also like uh, taking care of the higher needs of the customer. So the plan for Unit 4 could be slightly larger than what we envisaged last year. That should lead us to a much larger capacity. Um, are we confident of placing because I don't think uh, our largest customer is looking to grow more than 5-6%, at least that's the ambition and the guidance they have provided. Uh, um, I think uh, these molecules are uh, not only built for the next few years, but the next decade. Uh, seeing that new and uh, having a strong business continuity plan in place, I think uh, this is well appreciated. Uh. But uh, because will they, will this hurt the margins for us? Because we will be utilizing much lower capacity initially to start with and then probably ramp up over the years. Uh, will it have any major implications on the margins? So we try to, I mean, as a company, we've, we've um, at least demonstrated good abilities in capital management. The endeavor would be to also uh, have a multi-purpose nature in these blocks that we design uh, in the short term, but uh, keeping the long-term strategy in place. So it's better to have uh, uh, an additional capacity is our understanding. Just to add on, uh, we also need uh, need to keep the capacity in place for certain proposed launches. Like uh, if we succeed, maybe uh, our capacity should be ready in place at that point of time. Got it. Got it. Uh, fairly clear. Uh, thanks. Thanks for answering all those questions patiently, and best of luck for the coming quarter. Thanks so much. Thank you. Our next follow-up question is from the line of Bansi from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. So the sweetener business, we see, um, you know, sequentially this has picked up. Um, last quarter you had mentioned about launching a new product in this segment. So where are we on that? And should we expect, you know, uh, should we expect this to be uh, now a new base for a sweetener business? Uh, firstly, uh, I think, uh, yes, the sequence business is uh, progressing fairly okay. Uh, the other sweetener that we spoke about uh, is currently at the pilot stage. Um, we okay. are trying to optimize a few things, but uh, you will hear from us if there's any positive update. Uh, but uh, results so far are fairly encouraging. Okay, okay. So unlikely that that adds to you know uh, uh, your revenues in fiscal 25. I mean, the launch could potentially be uh, in 26. It, it could be, but it won't be a major needle mover. Okay, okay, understood, understood. And uh, for our uh, PI API, if you can talk about uh, any other molecules that we are working with uh, uh, innovators, which could be at advanced stage? There are a couple of opportunities that are at a very advanced stage in the, in the CNS and the oncology side uh, that we are tracking with the innovators. And... Uh, as it moves ahead, we will uh, definitely share some of this on that. Okay, but you think there's some time for you know those to uh, get commercialized? Clinical data is fairly positive of our end customers, and we believe that uh, they could have uh, a better solution to overall patient healthcare going forward. 
ओके एंड ऑन योर सीवीएस प्रोडक्ट एज दी वॉल्यूम रैम्प अप um and probably you know if at all the innovator also kind of you know uh, increases the uh, you know off take uh, what happens to the realization do they remain the same generally some efficiencies will certainly kick in so because you know uh, uh, if the volumes go up then the plant will be one line will be working as a dedicated uh, line for the product the bad size will be much much larger than what we do today so certainly some efficiencies will be there so uh, which should uh, go straight into the bottom line into the margins okay but so those are your process savings but uh, from the innovator side the realization i mean you know that that does not change uh the product is patented till 2032 so that's the advantage of being in a patented space uh generics will not be hitting so if that's the thing that you are trying to to hint to indicate hmm. Hmm. you don't generic pressure coming to 2032 in the advanced market okay and okay thanks thank you as there are no further questions i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments uh we thank all the participants and I hope we have addressed all your queries uh, we will meet in q1 results thank you thank you thank you sir on behalf of blue jet healthcare limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines